Hi, I'm Bob Canote, and welcome back to the Camp Chaos Chronicles. Now, if you've been following us at all, you know that we haven't actually published any videos in a long time. And there's reasons for that, and we'll get into that shortly. What we're going to do here to kick off this new season is we're going to get this mess sorted out. And if you've been following us at all, you know this is my favorite thing to do. Dang it. So you may well ask, where the heck have you been for the past several months? Well, let me tell you, it's kind of a good news, bad news story. Oh, the bad news, it's not that bad. Now, at the beginning of last year, I was able to, because I had some time, get, I believe it was 30 videos, edited, published, and scheduled by the middle of May, all the way out till the middle of August. And while those videos didn't get a ton of views, they did generate some business to the point where I got to be real busy. You know, business is always a good thing if you've got a business. But what it did is it precluded me from actually shooting, editing, and publishing any more videos. And so uh, ultimately what I had to do is to make some decisions as to the projects that I was going to tackle and, uh, and go from there. The other thing, that kind of threw a wrench into the works was the last week of November, I came down with my own personal infestation of COVID. And it wasn't a bad case. I mean, it, the, my symptoms were pretty mild. I didn't even have a much of a fever, but, but you know, it really did slow me down. I could get out here every day and, uh, you know, go through the emails and do a few things, ship products out and so forth. But, you know, by 10, 30, 11 o'clock, I was pretty much done, and there was a lot of recliner time involved the rest of the day. It took me until the 28th of December to finally get to the point where I actually felt pretty good. And uh, I've been putting in good days ever since. So what am I doing here? Well, what we've got here is my engine test stand. And prior to this, it's been used exclusively for carbureted engines, although we did have the AJ6 engine for the Champ car on here to get the uh, engine management system up and running and, and uh, you'll see a video on that. But uh, the business that's been generated from vi last year's videos, uh, most of this stuff has to do with Morelli ignition engines. And so what I want to do is I want to get this uh, stand set up for pre-running customer engines because number one, you want to make sure that they run and run right and number two, you want to make sure that they don't leak, particularly rear main seal, because you don't want the first indication that that's a problem to appear on the customer's floor after he's got the engine in his car. You want to know it right here and now, because it's not like other engines. To put another main seal in, the crank has to come out. It's kind of a nightmare. So, how did I set this up? Well, this engine is out of a 1990 XJS convertible that I bought just for this purpose. Pulled the engine out and the, uh, the electrical system. And the problem is not just hooking everything up because this is all, I pretty much know where everything, everything goes here, but well, it could be, you know, just plug everything up and get it started and do what I need to do. But also what I want to do is to get this thing cleaned up and, and uh, trimmed up to to the point where I can just take this and set this on top of the engine, plug everything in, hit the key and go. And a lot of that has to do with stuff like this. Now, as I said, the electrical system goes all the way from the front of the car to the rear of the car. So we got stuff like this going on here. This, of course, is the main run from front to back. I think we can trim this down a little bit. But even the rest of these need to be shortened up and positioned in such a way where, where it's nice and clean and, uh, and easy to do. So let's take a quick look at what we got here before we get started. First of all, if you want to see a little more in-depth view of the running stand and uh, how it goes together, 
I'll provide a link down below to the video we did in season one where we went into that in depth when we mounted the AJ6 champ car engine on there in order to develop the uh, mega squirt engine management system. But let's take a look at this setup. First of all, what we got here is the stand itself. We got a battery mounted on the back of the bell housing. We've got an instrument panel and ECU mount set up here. We got our gauges and switches for, uh, these switches are basically used for when we got carbureted engines in here. It's a pretty simple setup, but with a Morelli, you got to have one of these and one of those. In addition to that, we've got the throttle quadrant right here, which is kind of slick. And what this does, of course, is it operates the throttle turntable. Now, the cable is the XJ40 unit which works with both the V12 and the uh, AJ6 engine in the champ car. What I had to do is I had to make a bracket because it's longer from here to the, to the turntable. And so that mount wasn't gonna work. Made one right here. Flexes a little bit, but good enough for what we're doing. The radiator setup is a little different than what we had in the um, champ car setup. Down below here you can see we got a one inch piece of steel tube with a couple of holes drilled in it to accept the pegs at the bottom of the radiator and at the top of it is secured really really well by the upper radiator hoses so the mounting here is pretty simple. You can see the ignition amplifiers for the Morelli setup. We've got the um, Fuel injection power resistor pack mounted on the front here. Normally it would be down there on the inside of the fender well of the car. And you can see we've already got the fuel injection runs set up right here. And that took just about no additional work. However, all this stuff right here, that's going to take a little work, particularly right here where we need to lose about eight feet of that uh, harness that runs from the trunk to the front of the car. Now you can see here that we've got, I've got special exhaust manifolds and the main reason for that is that back where these mufflers are, that's where the catalytic converters go uh, usually in the stock down pipes and they interfered with the frame and so I came up with this which is pretty easy. A couple of 90 degree bends from the auto parts store and welded them on up here. Now the thing up here is that you've got to have the catalytic converters up here. You can eliminate those down there, no problem. But these, if you eliminate those, that, which is the O2 sensor, is going to tell the computer that you're running way rich and it's going to lean the bejesus out of your mixture. Found that out the hard way. So you can also see that we've got new O2 sensor here installed on the side. Initially it didn't need that because we were running carbureted engines. Just a simple matter of uh, drilling a hole, welding in the bungs, 18 millimeter bungs for the O2 sensor. Thing is though, the O2 sensors, while the ends are right, we got about a foot and a half too much line here which we're probably gonna disconnect the ends here and shorten it up to an appropriate length and do that. So that's what we've got here. Oh, and also right here, we have the panel that we're gonna mount all the relays and other ancillary stuff, make a bracket to hold this uh, bulkhead fitting. And uh, we got the starter relay, inhibit relay, um, forget what the other relay is up on the right rear side of the engine compartment and we got our fuel pump and main relay down there and a lot of stuff associated with running a Morelli engine or actually the thing is the fuel injection isn't much difference from a Lucas ignition engine it's just a slightly different ECU and I've got that so if I want to run a Lucas engine on this it'd be really easy to swap over. So 
that's what we got. Now, when you're doing a project like this, one of the first things you would do is to come up with a wiring diagram. And really, most of this stuff is identical to what we had on the 1987 XJS, old tax that we did uh, the first year. And uh, I've got all those diagrams in a book, so that's great. But you know what I've got? i got something better. I've got that. That's my 1990 Jaguar XJS convertible. And the fact is, everything I need to know is right underneath that hood. And people ask me why I have so many Jaguars. As I said, we're going to take this unnecessarily long portion of the wiring harness and eliminate it. And it really only needs to run from here to there. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut this part of the wiring harness here, cut this one here, and then we're going to splice them together. Now the reason that I'm overlapping this is that when you're doing something like this, what you don't want to do is cut them both at the same place and join them all at the same place, and then you get this big boa constrictor swallowed a pig sort of an effect in the middle of the uh, wiring harness because you got all the all the joints which are going to be a little bit bigger in diameter than the original wire in the middle where you made all the all the uh, connections so what I'm going to do is take a wire like this orange one right here well you can see it cut it here find the same wire on this harness now remember some of these wires like we've got two blue wires here and I believe these wires uh, carry uh, current to the heater on the O2 sensors. So uh, I don't know if you could cross them up and that would be a big deal because there's two sensors that operate the same way. But I think it's probably a good idea to not cross these wires up. And there's other wires here that are the same color as well. So you need to make sure that you got the right wires when you do the cutting. So you're going to have to trace it the length of the wiring harness to make sure. So we're going to splice this one here, splice the blue ones here and here, and so forth all the way along. So you spread the, the joints out over the entire run of the modification. And we get done with that one. We're going to move to this one. This one needs to be shortened up a little bit. And, uh, and that's going to, should be, that should be the hard part of this process, getting all this stuff shortened up and, uh, and working properly. That would also include the inordinately long runs for the O2 sensors as well. So at that point, then it's a matter of just making connections, you know, checking continuity and all the wires and uh, hitting the key and it ought to run. I've always been an optimistic kind of guy. Going through the wiring harness and I'm finding a number of spots like this where the insulation has been rubbed through through contact with the uh, with the structure of the vehicle and uh, you can see that this thing's been heated up and this isn't the only spot it's uh, so I got to go through this whole thing and find as much of this stuff as I can. You'd think that you could just plug this stuff in and go, but you know what, you do that, it could be disastrous. At different points throughout the harness, we have plugs like this. For example, like the ones on the fuel injectors, they're identical to this, and you can see that you got this spring here that when you push them on, they, the spring actually climbs little ramps and then snaps into place on the other side of the ramp and thereby retaining the um, 
the connection between the two parts. Well, the problem is this one isn't awful, but worst case scenario is this thing right here where you can see that both sides are broken off and the spring has departed. So what I did several years ago is I went to the local U-Puller car parts place and bought a number of these off of Saabs and Volvos and so forth, which is essentially the same plug, except you got this little spring right here and you can see how it operates. And you push on the spring, the legs on it climb ramps and release the connector so you can just pull it off. The problem with these is you got to wiggle them back and forth and after a while they get hard and brittle and they end up breaking. These seem to be made out of a plastic that's not quite so heat sensitive. Although we are talking about a Jag V12 here which does tend to run a little on the warmish side. Even when they're running right the outside of that engine is just really really hot. So let's go ahead and install this in place of this. A little word about the fuel tank I use. It's a standard Atwood six gallon marine tank. It's got a quick disconnect that because of the marine applications, you're always taking this tank in and out of the boat. It's kind of the same thing here with my test stand. And that works fine with carbureted engines, but with fuel injected engines, you gotta have a return. So what I did is I bought Another one of those fittings made a little billet uh, thing that I could screw into the top of the tank and the return is that one right there. Uh, the cap of the tank I leave loose so it'll vent. Uh, the thing about this is it works great when it's actually in operation, but I don't know if the automotive fuel doesn't agree with these O-rings, but these quick connects are just really, really hard to disconnect. They're not that quick. So I'm gonna be looking for some other um, solution to that problem, but right now I'm gonna fill this thing up with 91 octane and see what the heck happens. Now, last year I made the commitment to keeping these episodes 15 minutes or less. And we've already broken that standard by about three minutes. So I think we're gonna pull the pin on this episode right now. There's a lot to it. And if you like these videos, like, subscribe, follow us on Facebook, and put a few comments down below so that we can know what we can do to do we do better. And also, what do you think of the new facial hair? Should it stay or should it go? We'll see you the next time on the Camp Chaos Chronicles.